रियली कोई आइडिया नहीं है नो ओके सो वॉट इज द वर्स्ट केस वेन ऑल आर सिंगल टर्न देन यू हैव टू अप्लाई एल एक्सपेंसन रोल बट देन यू डोंट हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई विद दिस एल नो ईच कंपोनेंट हेड साइज एल देन यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई विथ वन सो इधर यू विल सेव हेयर और यू विल सेव हेयर इधर यू विल सेव इन एक्सपेंसन और यू विल सेव ऑन द साइज so in life whenever you see some log there is only one idea in the world and the idea is you group them based on their weight okay so i would have <coughs> i look at these components i say okay all those guys which weights like which size is between l and l by 2 okay then between l by 2 and l by 4 and so on and so forth right so i made log l group right and in each either this will be a small or that will be a small and then you will get it no see as we go down my expansion will increase but the size of the component will decrease why did we get l q because we also multiplied with the size of the component right so but but when you are applying actually when you are applying l expansion rule because every component has size 1 then you will multiply with 1 right so that's it okay so try to work it you get my point right so either you will win because of expansion or you will win because the size of the component but you will win at, you will win one of the places and that is why you will get log l okay so that bond so we'll keep this we don't need this statement so let's delete this okay let's do some other problem <clears throat> template will be same i'm going to call this cluster vertex relation relation <coughs> So what is the cluster graph? A graph is called a cluster graph if every connected component is a click. Okay. This is not even true. does anyone knows can i say something of this nature some properties of a cluster graph a graph g is cluster if and only if as what as what Because they click, there is a path of as big a size as you wish. So, okay, if and only if G does not contain induced P three. Okay, so can you give me an approximation of them for this problem? च 
sorry, just change this, okay. Delete induced P3, like all the three vertices, and keep repeating in the remaining graph until it is a cluster graph. Approximation this. Okay, so we have got a solution. And what is the solution size? 3k, otherwise we can say no. Okay. What is this? Clicks. Now I want to apply something so that the number of clicks becomes bounded. What should I do? Look, these are disjoint union of clicks, right? But there can be many, many clicks. I want to reduce the number of clicks. Objective, objective. I am not telling me the reduce the number of clicks. I am not saying that click size you are bounding. No, 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 no. I just in the first iteration, I just want to get rid of lots of clicks. I want to bound the total number of clicks which are present by applying some reduction rule. Okay, so you want to make a vertex? A vertex in S. S is anyway vertex set. So for every click I have a vertex, okay, every click I have a vertex. What should I do now? What is the most obvious thing? If this vertex has a neighbor here, then add a key, which is fine. What else do I do now? Now what should I do? Viva, lunch khaya hai na bhi, to thoda tej bol sakte ho aap. Hum kyo on 2 expansion, kyo nahi 3 expansion laga rahe hai. You understand, why are we applying 2 expansion lemma, why not 3 expansion, why not 35 expansion. Because you are recorded. Right? What happens? If you notice, these are disjoint clicks. Right? These are disjoint clicks. Right? Now, if I pick a vertex here and look, I made an like it means it has at least one neighbor here. Right? It has so it is an induced P3. Right? Because there is no edge from here to here because they are right. So, pick a vertex which is neighbor to this guy and pick a neighbor, this forms an induced P3 so that forms me abstraction, right. So, I will apply an expansion lemma with 2, okay. So, now if it is large, if the number of components is more than 6k or whatever this number is, what will happen? Then we will get a x here and a y here x here and a y here and what is the property? Every vertex in x okay, they could be adjacent to other people too, I am not saying that. And what else do you know? These guys are not adjacent to anybody else, right? Read. 
y has no neighbor outside x it means this clique has no neighbor outside x okay so what's the reduction rule look locally he has to pick at least one guy so pick this guy that's it that's your reduction rule no i mean it's if you think through properly it's like all of these are like vertex cover vertex cover vertex cover vertex cover vertex cover vertex cover on a steroid there is nothing more. So I keep applying this reduction rule. What happens as a result of this reduction rule? I can at least bound the number of connected components by what? How many number of connected components will be remaining after that? Six. Khana khaya hai tune to kaske bol sakte hai. That is it, right? So because we have applied two expansion lemma, right? So what is it? This should be because I cannot apply B is at less than or equal to Q times A. Q is 2, right? A is A's role is played by S. So the number of connected components which is left is at most 6K. Okay. I thought I will this is all that I will tell about this and stop, but okay, let me complete. Let me see if I can give you a complete kernel, not that I remember very well, okay. But all I want to tell you that you could use this to bound the number of connected components. So now we have S and here I have connected components bounded by 6K and this is bounded by 3K. So we have only, now I would like to bound each of the click. Okay. Okay. So let's focus on each click for now. Okay. So let me. Hambol. You wanted to say something. Okay. So look at these guys. Okay. I'm zooming in. Okay. Zooming in, and I am going to introduce a concept of modules. Okay, concept of modules. A set X subset of VG is called a module. So, this is a new reduction rule you are going to see now. Okay, it is called a module if for all x comma y okay let's say for all u comma v in x in u minus x is same as in v minus x so what is the meaning of this look at this guy u and v okay Man, suppose this is my set look at its neighborhood outside they see same neighbors right so if someone from outside, they, these two guys cannot differentiate anyone from outside. This is all that it means, right? Because what is in u minus x with respect to, you look at any vertex from outside, either they are neighbor to both vertices or they are non neighbor to both vertices. This is exactly what this condition is trying to tell us. Am I right? Okay. So greedily I try to find such vertices from here a set of guys which forms a module, right? So I start greedily, okay, fine. I can try to find a module here, right? I find a module here in this com connected component. This is module. What is the property of this? From outside perspective, these guys are same, okay? And these guys, I cannot add them. What is the property of these guys? Why?
okay. So, if this is a module and my claim is that I can reduce this by I can make it k plus 1 size. I can remove any vertex if this module is large here I can delete any vertex. Why? Look at this. Look at look what happens. Look at a solution of size at most k right for the reduced instance or maybe we will have to do uh, maybe k plus 2 or k plus 3 we will see. Suppose I deleted this vertex w forward direction is trivial because it is an induced subgraph of my graph. But look at the backward direction and I claim that if you have a solution of size at most k then it is a solution of size at most k in the previous graph. Suppose not. It means there must be a induced p3 passing through w good. So, let us I do not know how they are, but from the outside perspective there are k plus 1 vertices there is at least one more vertex which is left even after deleting a solution call that w prime. So, this also forms an induced p3 and this is an induced p3 in my reduced graph, but then how was that solution. So, this is how you take care of module why because their neighborhoods are same from the outside perspective right. So, you do not have to keep too many right you just keep k plus 1 of them so that you have extra redundant to talk about in the previous graph agree. So, in each of this component module part can be bounded by k plus 1 right. What I am not able to bound things which are not module I mean I mean if I add this they are not module ok. You, you, you see what I am saying ok. Now, how do I reduce the remaining size? A component is either a module or not a module. So, why? A connected a click. Yeah, so, uh, yes, a click is either a module or not a module. Why? I did not get it. So, if a component has two vertices such that one vertex C is some uh, and fix the vertex in S. Okay. So, C is saying something very interesting. Okay. So, let us try to as I told you right I did not think about it. So, what C is saying fix a click. Okay. So, what C is saying either it is a module or it is not a module am I right? Yeah. Not a module. Okay. So, what is what is he saying look at this guy suppose I have a vertex from here right which sees this guy some vertex here and there is some vertex with respect to S because anybody they are module with respect to the click because they do not see anybody here right. So, all I have to care about is with respect to X and there is an Y which is not neighbor to it am I right is that. Pick a pair here A B. It is a click anyway. So, of course, A B is an edge. A B is an edge and B is not neighbor to S, but A is neighbor to S. A is neighbor to some vertex in S. Some vertex in S. So, that will give you a reach P3. If this guy is neighbor to some vertex say X, okay. And B is not neighbor to X. B is not neighbor to X. So, that gives you a reach P3. Yes. But why cannot it happen that I can find a small subset of vertices here which forms a module? So, those together with three will create obstruction, right? Yeah. yeah, so every vertex from that part huh? forms a module with respect to S with P, which is a non neighbor to uh, some vertex in S, will form an obstruction. No, I did not get your point. This is a module, yes, yeah. A, B, so or say A prime, B prime. Yes, yeah, so I am saying any A prime there inside mm. the module mm. will form a P3 along with B and any vertex from S. Okay, so look at his neighbor here. 
but maybe his all neighbors okay why is b outside b is outside because there is a vertex here like for, for every vertex there is same neighborhood here and same non neighborhood here okay b has why is not b here because Yes, or maybe it is neighbor to him, but he is also neighbor to someone else. That could also happen, no? Right? And this is why I could not put him here because this guy is maybe he also has another guy who he is neighbor to. Right? So maybe all these guys were neighbor to him, but not to him. Okay? It could happen. Hmm? then also we will get. So, what are we claiming? So, I am saying that either you have a, if, if your whole component, if the whole click is a module. Then I know how to reduce it to k plus 1. you know how to reduce it, if, if the whole click is not a module, then you are getting a. Uh, no, no, but why can't a portion of this guy is in module? Okay, so let us do as follows, okay. Let us just let us just do let us just do something else. Okay, as this is what I told you, right? Wait. Okay. Let us not confuse ourselves, otherwise, we will unnecessarily confuse ourselves. Let us not confuse ourselves, okay. Yes. So, this is what I was going to do. Pick up a vertex here, okay. Look at suppose, look this if this there is a click which is look at this vertex, okay. I for this vertex I am going to do something, okay. Notice one thing, look at his neighbors. This is his neighbors, right, and this is his non neighbors. Notice if this is his non neighbors for this particular vertex, then I am going to get. induced p3s right so if this size is big and this size is big if if the click size is big or if the non click size is big like if the what you call it, if the neighbor size is big and what you call non neighbor size is big then this vertex must go into a solution because this is forming k plus 1 flower okay so i apply this reduction rule so, what is the meaning of this? For every vertex here, there is a big side and there is a small size, right? Both cannot be big. Agreed? Okay. So, we will we'll see what happens because of that, okay? So, this is true. Otherwise, I would have applied reduction rule, okay? So, now, so I am still talking with respect to this. But, so what is true with respect to every vertex, for every vertex, v and I fix a click c for every vertex v whenever I fix a click click either n of v intersection c is smaller than less than equal to k or like non neighborhood of v intersection c is less than equal to k. Agreed? Okay. Okay. So now for every vertex, for every vertex, let us fix up a click and see which portion is a small. For some portion is a small anyway, right? So just bound that. And what is left outside? OK. 
Okay, let's fix it. Okay. Okay, I will tell you this a little bit more cleaner. I, I don't think I can think on the fly like this. Okay. I'll give you a I'll give you a kernel later. Okay. Let's I mean I think we are just going in circle. Okay. This there is much more easier argument. All I wanted to do from here is to bound the number of components using expansion lemma. Rest you need a very different set of arguments which which I do not think this is the right problem to introduce those ideas. Okay. We will just unnecessarily get into okay. Okay, so huh? I think that is fine also, like the rest will be modular. Yes. I think the rest will be modular. If you bound a small thing, the rest will be modular. Yes. At least that is what I think, but I am not able to check on the fly. So maybe we can talk after after 3 30 just for 10 minutes and finish it off if everybody understands that. Okay. I mean they are recorded. Okay. So now what I would like to do is to give you a k square kernel for feedback vertex set. Okay. So you know for feedback vertex set we can do minimum degree one reduction rule. The one reduction rule. Okay. You can also do minimum degree two reduction rule. What is this? You have x, y, z. Then if all the cycle that pass through x also pass through y, z, so you can get rid of x. It might it might create parallel edges. Don't care. Okay. Notice to get a kernel for feedback vertex set, what we did with our marking procedure. We reduce the degree to k square. Okay. But now what I will do, so remember by because of redundancy for every v, we have a set s v. And what are the property of this set s v? We had here s v, here we had connected components okay. and here we had v and let us only, let only consider those connected component which v is neighbor to. There could be some more connected component which v does not have, but these guys could have a neighbor to, but I do not care because my whole objective is to bound the degree of this. So now what? My SV is a role of solution and now for every component here, I make a vertex. Okay? And from this vertex to this vertex, I give an edge if there is some vertex here in this component for which there is an edge, like just normal. Okay. Now I will apply two expansion lemma. Okay. So if this, I want to apply two expansion lemma, how will the world look like? Let us try to understand how does the world look like here. Okay. The world look like as follows. Now let us just zoom in. Okay. So how does the world look like? Here is an object and here are some components and everybody has private component. And what is the property of this component? This is a part of the big set S V, right? These guys do not have any neighbor here. These guys do not have any neighbors here. That is a property of this. And here is my V which seeing him like this. What is the property of this? Notice. If you notice, look, if it has a neighbor here, there is a way to get to this vertex which he is neighbor to. So basically, if you notice, it is forming a cycle like this, right? And these are like SV's vertices, right? So what we know here, we can prove the following, either V goes into my solution or this set SV goes into, like this subset X goes into my solution, why? Right? Because look, if we, I mean there exists an optimum solution, now, again local optima. Look from this cycle, some vertex will be picked. From this cycle, some vertex will be picked. From this cycle, some vertex will be picked. Right? So now, if you do not pick V, then what can I do? Take this guy and move it to here and then this does more job than, than picking a vertex from here. But look, like before, I cannot delete this. I have to remember this. So, how yes, I make a two cycle with V. I make two cycle with V. Just to remember the fact, 
either V goes into the solution or this set goes into the solution and then I decrease, delete all the edges incident to this component, right. And if already some vertex has two cycle incident to it, do not do it more. So, it cannot increase degrees too much, I mean you need to argue but that is an idea, right. E either V goes into the solution or I can locally move the solution to SV. This is exactly the same idea we have been using from morning onwards. So, there is no difference. Yes. This word component can be can form this kind of structure for many vertices V, many vertices, right? Which V? Like so this is V is a fixed vertex now. Hmm. But other different vertices, hmm. this same structure can uh, this one component can be part of the same structure, right? It will never be, but yes, if it is then think suppose V does not go into the solution then some vertex from here here like some vertex from these two cycle will go into the solution right. Let us move it here I have not increased my solution right. If I delete this what is this they are forest if this is forest this is a degree 1 vertex apply reduction rule. If I delete this set now all these components are forest because they all had neighbors here. It cannot be look at this this is this is your whole graph right there are some other components sitting here right but they are just not adjacent to V this is your whole graph right what is this I deleted SV I have a I have a forest from there I deleted V then I got some connected component which V was neighbor to those guys I do not care. So, this is the whole graph. So, when I apply the reduction rule or I said if I pick this what is left is a forest. So, degree 1 degree 2 reduction rule will apply and then everything will be exhausted. So, there is nothing else happening here. So, this is a local goes to global ok. So, you saw lots and lots of application of this. Okay. Do you want me to prove formally? Look, I deleted some edges. Right? Backward direction is very trivial because I have forced them to be. Forward direction, I have to prove that either this or this will go into the solution, that is what we were trying to argue. So, let me talk, talk some strange things for 10 15 minutes, ok. Ok, so ok, H is called minor of G if H can be obtained from G with following operation. First, delete a vertex, delete an edge. last contract an edge and what is a contracting an edge means? So, if suppose you had an edge u v, you make a vertex u v make him adjacent to either neighbor of u or v. It might create parallel edges, so be it. 
in some cases we will allow parallelages, in some cases we do not parallel, do not allow parallelages, but for now we will allow parallelages. Okay, so this is called minor. Okay, is the definition clear? Right? I call a graph H a minor of a G. If I can obtain H from G by deleting vertices, okay, or deleting an edge or contracting an edge. Yeah, so you make it adjacent to either U or V. It either means hmm. not both. Take whichever is look. So suppose it is A B C D E F. Naturally, it will be neighbor to A B C D E F. That's what I meant. So the, then, shouldn't you say or when you say neighbor of U and V, then it, then you're talking about intersection, and I want to talk about union. Okay, fine. Okay, so why, I mean why suddenly out of blue moon I am talking about H, right. So let us define F minor vertex deletion set, deletion, okay, problem. So your fixed f is given to you, okay. So input will be g, number will be k, parameter will be k, okay. And the question is, does there exist a set x subset of vg mod x is less than or equal to k and g minus x does not contain any H in F as a minor. So what I want to do, I want to delete K vertex from the graph such that there is no minor from H, okay. So question number one is vertex cover can be casted as this problem and how? Did you get my question, right? So suppose this is a generic problem. I want to write vertex cover as this problem with appropriate notion of F. What is that F? Okay, good. So F is just single edge. Agreed? Feedback vertex set. Huh? Yeah, if you allow parallel, you can also allow loop. This is fine. Okay. Do you know what planar graphs are? Do you know planar graphs? Uh, what is that? As what? So, do you all of you know this? No. Okay. This is fine. So, planar graphs are actually there is also notion of topological minor blah 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 and for planar graph they characterize it, it is equivalent. So, I can also talk about if I fix f equal to complete graph on 5 vertex and a complete bipartite graph on 3. So, if you notice these two as these two graphs are not planar graphs. You cannot draw a complete graph on 5 vertices on plane without crossing an edge, but K4 you can, see, right. I need edge from here to here, I can draw like this, this is a planar graph. K33, K23 I can draw, right, but try to draw K33, 
like try to add one more vertex to this, you will have to cross. So these are like smallest, right? And you can show that a planar graph is a graph is planar if and only if you do not contain this graph as a minor. Okay. So, so I can write any graph and it makes sense to talk about F minor vertex deletion. So what is known? Okay. So now we classified F based on two object. F contains a planar graph. F does not contain a planar graph. Okay. So I define uh, like given a fixed F, I say oh this is a great F because it contains a planar graph. It is a bad F if it does not contain a planar graph. For example, this is a bad F, it can is both graphs are non-planar. But if I add here a triangle, now it becomes a good family of graph because it does contain non-planar, but it also contains a planar graph. I am not saying everybody has to be, even one planar graph is good enough for us. Okay. So now you saw a kernel for vertex cover, you saw a kernel for feed to vertex set and you put more steroid and then you can show that. So let us call this, this is what is called planar F vertex deletion has kernel of size this. Okay. And for non-planar, I do not even know whether this contains a, this is a kernel or not, this also I do not know. But for this problem is FPT for every fixed F, for any fixed F this is FPT, we will get to that later at some part of the time in the course. So, so since all these are FPT family of graphs, it is it is a very desirable question to do this. Okay. If I will have a time and energy, I will teach you this. But then for that lecture, you will have to like uh, rather than yourself. Okay. So just to give you a feeling where does this leads to, what kind of research as questions are still done. So now people can ask all kind of question, right? Whether this, what happens if I can try to parameterize this problem by vertex cover or feedback vertex set or this deletion set or that deletion set, right? So when we will get to tree width, I will also get to the canonical problems in this family, which is called tree with eta deletion problems, but I will get to that when I get there. Is that a when is it FPT? It is FPT all the time. Huh? This is what I wrote. F minor vertex this problem is FPT F for every fixed F. But whether they admit kernel or not kernel, it is only known when this. So this is Neil's thesis. Okay. So I have introduced the notion of minor and I have introduced lots of problem which fits into this framework. Right? Okay. The great thing is, no, for, but for this, I will give you a C power K FPT algorithm. I will give you fa constant factor approximation, everything. Let us get there. But for weighted version, I can only give you poly log n square n approximation. We will get there eventually. Okay. Oh, this algorithm is trivial, but, but you will have to pace yourself. We will see, we will see this. This is like one line algorithm. The one line algorithm is randomly pick an edge, pick a vertex branch, that is it. That is your algorithm. I told you actually. There is nothing more to that. Okay, so more or less, I told you lots of things. Let me do Niemhaus or Trotter, like a simple 2K vertex kernel, 
and then we will move from cardinalization to do other set of things like trying to get C power k algorithm for this problem, right? Assuming some black box, and I will tell you what those black boxes are. For all those who are going to start PhD soon, with respective set of people whom I know, it is important to know these things. So I am exactly teaching you what I am asked to teach. You may not know, but I am exactly teaching those things which you will be asked to read either in the first month or the few months. I am just doing I'm just doing job for my friends. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Where have I reached? Except Nemo's. So now let us try to see a better vertex cover kernel and I am just doing it for the sake of doing it, okay. So this is called anti theorem or neem hauser trotter theorem and this is for vertex cover. I am not going to define vertex cover all over again, come on. So now let us write down its LP for unweighted version. Do you know how to write linear programming formulation for vertex cover? for every vertex, every V in Vg, we have a variable Xv, agreed? And you will see why matching, why I am teaching it now, not before, it is just a stupid matching theory, okay? Hall's theorem, Hall's theorem, okay? So for this, so what we do? We do minimize summation Xv, V in Vg. And what are our constraints? Look, I assume that you have seen all these things. This is why I am not, I am not defining what linear programming is and blah, 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 blah. And for every edge uv in eg, we have a constraint xu plus xv is greater than equal to 1, right? And xu is in 0, 1. So this is what is called, I will call integer linear programming, ILP, okay, okay. And what is the relaxation? You put I and you replace this constraint with XU being greater than or equal to 0. So now you are allowing it to be rational. ILP is NP hard, why? Because vertex cover is NP hard. I mean, if not anything else, because vertex cover is NP hard. But relaxation can be solved in poly time, okay. In fact, for vertex cover, we can actually solve it using reduction to bipartite matching, actually. You can solve this linear programming optimally using reduction to bipartite matching. It is there in APT textbook. I remember we wrote it. So, but for, now, for our purposes, we will assume that LP can be solved in poly time. Okay, so let us prove there always exists an optimal solution with 0, half and 1. Okay, okay. optimal LP solution where XV is in 0, half, 1. I would like to prove this. So, let us let's see how we will go about proving it, okay. So, I have solved LP and you will see certainly from where the reduction rule comes in, right, okay. 
because people will tell you, oh, let's solve 0, half and 1, take all 1 into a solution, but why? There should be some reason. Have you ever thought about it? Why they pick all 1 in solution? Right, this is what the reduction rule is, right? Suppose, even if I solved you 0, half and 1, I gave you 0, half and 1 solution, why does it imply that all 1 has to be part of a solution? That does not imply. I mean, it is true, but we have to prove something more. We have to show there exists an optimum solution containing all 1s, right? But that will be become very clear from the proof, at least from the proof which I give you, which is not the same in the book, okay? Okay, so let us, so I am just going to partition my vertices based on this is V is strictly less than half. This is V equal to 1. Sorry, what am I doing? Huh, yeah, correct. So, this is all half all vertices which has been assigned half, vertices for which xv equal to half, here xv is greater than equal to half, xv is less than equal to half. So, I have just partitioned these vertices. Suppose there exists a, suppose there exists a matching that saturates V, v greater than equal to half. First of all, notice there is no edge from here to here, right? Because this is strictly less than half, this is equal to half, but for every edge, my constraint is greater than equal to 1. So, there cannot be an edge between a here and a here. So, all edge are going here, there could be edges here, and also here there is no edge, it is an independent set. Why? Because if there is an edge here, both values are like strictly less than half, but for that particular edge, our inequality is greater than or equal to 1, am I right? Okay. So, this is an independent set, independent set. Here you can have all kind of edges, here you can have all kind of edges and all this kind of thing. Case 1. V greater than or equal to half, there exists a matching saturating V greater than equal to half. Suppose if this happens, we are lucky, the register matching that saturates. Okay? Suppose the register matching that saturates. What I am going to do? What is the value of these two guys? Look at this edge. it has to be greater than or equal to 1, there is an edge. So, what I am going to do if there is a matching that saturates like this, then I am going to do a very funky thing. I am going to make V less than or equal to half, all guys 0, V greater than or equal to half equal to 1 and anyway this is V half is V half. And I am claim this does not increase the optimum value. Why? Look, look at the sum this guy is greater or equal to 1, I have maintained 1, right? I have maintained 1, so I might have reduced something from these guys because, but that is okay, I have made all of these guys 0, right? And I am claiming this is still a vertex cover because all the edges are here of this guy which are still there and these guys are 1, so taken care of anyway, all these guys taken care, all these guys taken care. So, this is a perfectly great situation if they exist a matching that saturates greater than or equal to 1. Do you agree? So, this is not the case, good. Then I am, if this is not the case, then I am going to tell you that this is not a correct LP solution. So, this is always will be the case. You understand my point? So, and if this is the case, then this is your head, you could have applied as a reduction rule because there is a matching that saturates says this. So, my proof also tells you a reduction rule, why all one, there exists an optimal solution containing all one. I am saying you always have this situation. Right? If this situation is there, then I know how to handle this, right? 
And now let me prove to you if this situation does not hold, then this is not an LP opt. I can increase the LP opt. Okay, so let's zoom in. This is my V equal to half. So tell me why there is no matching saturating V greater than equal to half? Why? What is the meaning of this? There is a Hall set. And what are this is a, and let's take minimal Hall set. Okay, what I am taking? Minimal Hall set. What is the meaning of this? I have a guy here which sees little guy and these guys do not see, these guys could see any other places. Yeah, these guys could see, see other places, fine. Right? These are larger guys and this is a smaller size. So this is x and y mod y is less than mod x. Do you agree? Because of a whole set. If there is no matching saturating this, then by whole set, this is true. Good. So, what I am going to do now, for all these guys, I am going to decrease by some value, still maintaining half. Look, they are strictly greater than half. Okay? So, I pick up an epsilon, I will, I will decide, I will, let us fix that epsilon a little bit later. Okay? So, what I am going to do, I am going to minus epsilon from all these guys and going to add plus epsilon plus epsilon plus epsilon to all these guys. There are more people I have subtracted this value than people I have and rest I keep. So definitely if epsilon is a non-zero quantity, I have reduced the LP value because for more people we have subtracted than the people I have added. Okay? Now let us argue why it is a vertex cover and then we will figure out what the value of epsilon should be. Look, epsilon is some non-zero number. We will choose that. Okay? So clearly if I can choose epsilon this and show and show that it forms a vertex cover, then clearly my LP value was not optimal because I could reduce. Let us look at all the edges. Edges here, all good. Edges here, all good. Edges here, I will choose in a, I will choose, so let us constrain, choose epsilon greater than 0 such that still every vertex in V greater than equal to half has value strictly greater than half. I will maintain this. This is the second constraint I want to apply. What is the meaning of this? All the edges here are still taken care because their value is more than half, right? Again here. So, everything here is, has been taken care. Okay, good. Now, try to understand this. Here, I did not change any value, no? So, nothing. So, anything which might have changed it must be adjacent to this guys which I have subtracted, right? But anyway, these guys among them, it cannot be. Right? Because I have subtracted something, I have added something. So, those guys cannot be. Only these guys could be a problem. But does such exist? Because then it is a neighborhood of this, right? Okay. And for this and this, hey, you have increased it only. So, what is the point? If at all you would have subtracted something, must be adjacent to the guys whose value you have decreased, right? And for them, here, here, they do not problem, here, here, no problem, if there is, but no, 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 this, this is all the people whom this guy sees here is Y, because it was neighborhood of, what is Y? Neighborhood of X intersection V less than half, this is exactly what it is. So, if I can choose epsilon in a way, non-zero, so that this happens, then this. and these guys are strictly greater than half. Right? So, you, okay. So, look at this guy. It is some half plus a, a1, half plus a2, blah, blah, half plus a l. Okay. Let a equal to min of a1 to a l. Okay. So, this is a. 
okay just take a prime less than a i mean real numbers are what is the property they are dense so i can take a prime strictly less than a and i'm done right because they're strictly i can write these are a1 a2 al are real numbers i first choose minimum of them this is also some real number choose a real number such that a prime is strictly less than a and subtract this and between like so that still everybody is strictly more than half and i can always choose this number they are so dense so i'm done right so this situation ability never arises so all the ways if i am an lp optimum then if you look at v greater than or equal to half they are matching their saturates and you can flip zero half that also means i can apply reduction rule we already saw this so that's it this is what nemo's daughter theorem is so if i can apply this reduction rule what is left every guy has half so what is an lp value right so you know that opt ilp opt ilp optimum value of integer linear programming is uh is less than equal to no is at least lp right right so opt ilp we want it to be less than equal to k right and what is an lp value here suppose there are n vertices so n by 2 because everybody has half so this implies n is at most 2k right optimum of integer linear programming is always greater than equal to linear programming value solution and k is what my opt is and every vertex here has lp value exactly equal to half so if there are n vertex we have n by 2 lp value so n is at most 2k and we are done so that's your reduction rule all good questions so this is what is the classical name also traitor theorem is so more or less i have taught you all the basic non basic kernels as much as i wanted to now i will teach you some more kernels one is based on modules which i would still like to teach you but not maybe tomorrow for some other time because i am bored with teaching kernels now and i want to teach you modules based kernel and rep set based kernel that will come towards the end of the course okay when we are mature enough to take algebra but are there any other kernel that we should be doing Are there any other kernel? Are there any other kernel that we should be doing? If you go and look at this, you have done half the book. I didn't do lower bounds, which I will do a little bit later. I have to do modules, which I told you. I'll teach rep set and matroid family. Then that will take care of this. Okay. Let's do one fun kernel. This will be useful anyway. Let's see. maximum leaf spanning tree okay hmm? 350 maybe we will break or maybe 320 then we will be broken we don't have class after this because 4 o'clock there is an algorithm class 
No, 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 I am not continuing after this. 3.30 is at best I will continue. This is way more cleaner way of presenting than given in the textbook. So, you write book and then you have a, you, be, you think later when you are teaching to someone that oh, maybe that is a better way of doing it. Okay. Okay, so I want, what I want to do is max leaf spanning tree. You will understand its importance a little bit later. Okay, so input is G comma K, okay, parameter is K. The G has a spanning tree with at least K leaves. You can assume that G is connected for now. G has a spanning tree with at least K leaves. What is your heuristic to try? What will you try? If, if I tell you, try some heuristic to find a spanning tree which should give you as many leaves as possible. What will you do? Okay. And then? Okay. If a graph has a vertex of degree greater than or equal to k, is it an yes instance? Yes, no, why? People have to speak slightly louder. I cannot. No, I, no, no. What I said, suppose there exists a vertex of degree at least k in my graph, nothing. Does it imply there is a spanning tree with at least k layer? Yes. Why? So? Why? So, but why do you think that you can complete a tree from starting from here? Okay. So, BFS seems to be a good heuristic, no? So, let us do a BFS. Look, graph may not have a vertex of degree greater than or equal to k and still it could have k leaves, right? You understand what I am saying to you, right? Because imagine I have two guys and then they break, then they break. So, I can create more leaves. It does not have to be have a high degree. So, even a cubic graph could have a spanning tree. In fact, a cubic graph has a spanning tree with n by 4 leaves. Three regular graph has spanning, ah? Huh? Yeah, n by 4 leaves. I did not get your point. Yes, it is true. You are right. Yes. So, any one of you are trying, just start with any spanning tree for all that I care. I do not care anything. Right? Or say BFS at any vertex. So, I have got spanning tree. Clearly, if it has more than k leaves, hey, hooray, hooray, hooray. So, v equal to 1 is less than k. So, what does it imply? v v greater than equal to Okay, so all other vertices are degree 2 birds. Okay, so in this tree, not in graph. Okay, in this tree, 
how many maximal degree 2 paths are there? Do you get my question? In this tree, look, it means now what is left? Like so all vertices are degree 2 and they are maximal in the sense I cannot extend it more because either something happens or something happens. So how many such paths are there? Maximal degree 2 paths are there. K minus 1? 3K? It is not k minus 1. Hmm? Plus? Yeah. So just, just look back at your argument, Pratibha. Yeah. If there are n tree, n guys, then n minus 1. I got it. But what is n? Right? Or other way of living, look at any maximal degree 2 path. Why are you, why it is maximal? Because look at the next, it, you stopped because the, because its child is either a degree 3 vertex or a leaf, right? So you can give a bijection because it has a unique child. Every maximal degree 2 path has a unique child, right? So you have given an injection to degree 2 vertices, sorry, degree 3 vertices union leaves, right? So this is bounded by 2k minus 1 or whatever, okay. But, but can I just shrink this path? I have, so now let us focus on this. Can I shrink this? Imagine yourself, this is what is called, this is what is great about this trick is, Imagine that you have five vertex, okay? One, two, three, four. Let's maybe make more. Suppose there was an edge here, which was like this. Then can I do something? If in graph, this edge is in graph, right? And I can delete this edge and increase an extra leaf. So I can do locally, right? fun, right? So now, if I look at any degree 2 path, there is no edge of this nature. Otherwise, I could increase the number of leaves. Like, this is like, I am trying to make my solution locally optimal. Like, I cannot do one edge replacement, one edge delete and one edge add and do this. Agreed? Okay, fine. So this, so now, even in graph, I do not have edge edge which are jumping on this degree 2 path. They, I do not have edge like jumping like this. Otherwise, I can take this, delete this edge and increase my number of leaves by 1. So like starting from this tree, I can increase to a, another spanning tree which has a larger number of leaves, right? So suppose I cannot do this. You, you get my point? So I can do this local exchange, okay. Maybe there is a vertex which has an edge to, so suppose for every degree 2 path, let us call the first two vertices sacrosanct. I am not going to touch him. Last two guys is sacrosanct. I will not touch him. I am only going to touch all these middle guys. Okay. Okay. I will, I do not want to touch those guys. I mean, okay. If this guy has an edge to some other degree 2 path which is non sacrosanct what can i do can i do something i can still increase the number of leaves so i can say that there is no edge from sacrosanct vertices like the cleaner vertices okay can they have a edge to degree 3 vertices look if they have an edge to some degree 3 vertices, somewhere I can still, no, no, I can, what I can do? Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, 
then but suppose it is a degree 3 vertex what can I do? Suppose it has an edge to a degree 3 vertex what can we do? Remove the parent edge huh? of this vertex. Yeah, I, then I can remove this right. I can get connected from here and I can get extra leaf. So all, so you keep doing these improvements because every and you cannot do too many times because every time you are increasing the number of leaves by one. So basically if you forget this part, forget this part, these guys are like isolated path in your graph. These are like degree, these are the real degree 2 vertices in path. Now you can prove yourself that if it is too big, you can contract, like you can make it a constant size path, like some 2, 3 is enough. You can prove it for yourself, I mean I do not have, I, mean, I just wanted to give you a flavor of this. But if I do this, now everything is bounded, right? Number of leaves is bounded number of degree 3 vertices is bounded, number of like number of degree 2 paths are bounded and in each path there are 2, 2 and some constant. So like some 10, 12 k kernel you can get from here, right. But here we use slightly different time. What is it? Locally optimal solution. So like local exchange optimal solution. Simple. No? And this idea of local, whenever you have a problem with some leaf, leaf, blah, blah, you keep doing this and this will happen. So if someone gives you a problem like this, think of this way. I will start with any spanning tree. What can I do with the remaining edges? Can I move around and this set? I generally use it to boundary width of an input graph because this makes my graph very structured. So now I can have a decomposition theorem for this. We will see one, I will give you one such example when we reach there, but this is how, but you can also use it for kernelization process, okay. I mean I did not complete the argument like why can you shrink it? You have to show that oh if you had many leaves before, you will have many leaves now and blah, 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 but this is not very hard to do. But the idea is we get to a locally optimum solution and then we get to a path which is really a degree 2 vertex path in my graph. And then we can shrink it, otherwise we cannot shrink it. And otherwise we will like other, so it is like you have an inductive priorities that each, each inductive priorities extends the number of leaves by one, okay, good. So I think I will leave it here.